The powerful automation capabilities found in Cubase make fine-tuning your mix a breeze. Most of the parameters for automation can be accessed directly here in our automation panel. We'll have several different modes of automation, plus fill mode, suspension, and some global functions as well. Now, automation data appears on subtracks. So I don't have to have 14 different types of automation data visible on my main project window. So if I wanted to come here, by default, the automation track will be volume, but you could set it to every single parameter that is in fact automatable right here. Now I could also engage writing the automation by clicking on the W button. So W is for write automation, R is for read or play back the automation. Now the default automation mode that you have in Cubase is touch automation. And as the name implies, it means that as soon as you're touching the fader, it's writing that data as automation. Uh, when I release the fader, it will kind of kick out of automation mode. So let's take a quick look at it. So if I wanted to automate, I could come right over here. And now when I release the fader, the automation is disabled as soon as I touch the fader. Now, if I'm using a touch sensitive controller like the Steinberg CC121, as soon as I physically touch the fader, it'll sense that and will start writing the automation. As soon as my finger leaves the surface of the fader, it will kick out of automation. So very, very easy. If I wanted to maintain the same level without writing, without me having to hold my finger on a fader, I could put it into auto latch mode. So now as soon as I move the cursor away from the fader, not touching it, it will continue to write the automation data until I actually stop the playback of the transport. Now we also have our third mode will be crossover. Now a crossover will allow you to do easy touch up. So if I come right over here and I kind of dip below the existing threshold and then as soon as I cross over the threshold, it'll kind of kick out uh, automation automatically. So now we come here and let's go ahead and write some of our automation. So as soon as I go below the threshold, and then as soon as I go above it and cross it, it automatically will kick out the automation. Now we can also trim our automation. And what trimming will allow you to do is the fader will be set directly in the middle and I could raise or lower the and still kind of maintain the automation curve. So if I come here, I could still maintain kind of the curve but kind of increase or decrease in little spots to change the automation. So if I wanted to have that kind of coalesce, I could just simply take off my trim mode. Now there's several settings here. If I wanted to change that to manually or on a pass end or on leaving trim mode, I have different options and preferences for the trim mode behavior. Now, if I actually wanted to edit my different parameters of automation, I could come right over here and if I wanted to just select the value, I could actually go to my information line and come right over here and just simply use my scroll wheel to increase or decrease the values of my automation. I could also come right here and cut copy paste. So if I like that automation, I wanted to apply it to a different track, I could come right over here, copy it and paste. And of course, obviously using my keyboard shortcuts as well. Now we're gonna have different fill modes. So a lot of times, realize that if you're working with a large project, it could be hard to actually get to all the tracks at the beginning. So if I wanted to kind of touch something up right here, I could put it into my fill mode of two punch. So as soon as I kind of grab my fader, it'll start writing and then I will say, okay, so from where I started, where I actually touched the fader and to where I released, now I want to find the value for that time range. So now as soon as I let go, it'll write that value from when I touched the fader to when I actually let go stop the transport. Now, if I wanted to come over here, let's say I haven't gotten to the uh, third guitar part until the second verse, I could come right over here and I could have fill to start. So now I could find the level that I want to the start of that track, let go, and it's going to write the automation at the very beginning of the track. Or conversely, I could have it do a fill to end. So I could come here and I want that value till the end of the track. And we could also have a loop. So let's say I know that there's a guitar solo between measures four and nine. As soon as I'm in that loop, I could come right over here and find that value. And now it'll just automatically write that automation value 
directly within that selected range of between our left and right locators. Now you may notice that as soon as I actually come over here, that these values will disengage. So as soon as I hit play and I have to end, I hit my stop and my transport, it disengages. So if I actually come here and click on it twice, I could actually maintain that. So it'll always be to start mode. So I could actually use different combinations of these elements. So I could come right over here, have to start and within the loop. So very, very powerful for doing all of our automation. Now, one of the great things with Cubase is we don't have to predefine our different elements that we want to automate. So if I wanted to come here and I have this track going on, uh, we'll come right over here. And let's say I just wanted to automate my volume changes. So I'll come right here and I wanted to do my panning. I want to adjust my EQ. Uh, if I have different effects parameters here, I could just open up different plugins, automate those parameters. So I don't have to predefine and tell the program what in fact I actually want to automate. So rewind here, we'll just kind of jump back. Uh, we'll see that everything that I just did will now just be automated and played back. So very, very easy to kind of turn on and we'll see the EQs kind of kick in. And now if I wanted to augment the automation tracks and come right over here, I could do panning and volume and still adjust my EQs and write additional automation data. Now, sometimes you may want to actually suspend reading and writing of different data. So if I come here, let's rewind and let's say I didn't want to actually see the EQs being written. I wanted the EQs to be a static value. So I can actually come over here and not have the EQ automation, but still have my volume and panning. Now I could also suspend reading and writing of different elements. So if I'm kind of coming over here and I'm looking for a good EQ frequency, I could actually suspend writing of everything except for my volume. So if I adjust my EQ or my plugins or my sends, those actually won't be written as automation. It'll be kind of a static value. So I could come now right over here and I could now just, when I move my fader for my volume, that'll be the only thing that is automated. So I could suspend reading and writing of your different automation elements. Now we can also have very powerful views. So if I wanted to see, for instance, all of my volume automation or all my panning, all my EQs, my sends, my inserts, uh, only used automation. So I could actually come over here and have different viewing filters. I want to hide all my automation in one mouse click. Very easy to do. Now I could also come over here and let's say I wanted to actually look at all of my automation. I could actually delete the automation within my selected range between my left and right locators or delete all the automation on selected tracks or within a project. So I don't have to go through meticulously erasing automation data from another mixer. So as you can see, the automation capabilities found in Cubase are extremely powerful and allow you to really finely tune the mix and take it to the next level.